Hi, this is Peter Taiti and Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 112 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case illustrating that sometimes anything that can go wrong will go wrong. The patient was a 59-year-old man with previous coronary bypass graft surgery. He had a lima to LAD and a saphenous vein graft to the right coronary artery, and he presented with unstable angina. Diagnostic angiography, as I will demonstrate in the following slides, showed severe high-grade lesion of the saphenous vein graft to the right coronary artery. As expected, the lima was in good condition, supplying the left anterior descending artery. The left main and the circumflex were patent. However, the saphenous vein graft to the right had a high-grade thrombotic appearing lesion, whereas the native right coronary artery was occluded in the mid-segment with an acute marginal originating at the proximal cap. After discussion with the patient as well as the referring providers, a decision was made to attempt recanalization of the native right coronary artery because we know that in heavily degenerated saphenous vein graft, as was this one, the long-term patency can be fairly low even if acute success is achieved. Moreover, the risk of intervention on this graft is not insignificant given the high-grade appearance. We obtained dual arterial access and performed dual injection that demonstrated that the right had a blunt proximal cap with some ambiguity. There was a length of about 40 millimeters. The distal cap was at a bifurcation and the distal vessel was filling by the, by the vein graft and there was also epicardial collaterals from the left coronary system. Therefore, our plan was as a first step to attempt retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. Second, try undergrade wire escalation. Third, try undergrade, uh, try retrograde via the epicardial. And if everything fails, try undergrade dissection reentry. with this being the last uh, resort since there was uh, a bifurcation at the distal cap. This is the injection from um, the left, and that demonstrates um, the presence of epicardial collaterals going towards the distal right coronary artery. We attempted to advance a wire through the degenerated saphenous vein graft. However, despite trying multiple wires, both with and without a microcatheter, we were actually unable to cross through this high-grade saphenous vein graft lesion, and also we had significant reduction in undergrade flow through the saphenous vein graft. And that is why we changed our crossing attempts going with undergrade wire escalation. That unfortunately failed, and that is why we then considered performing retrograde through the epicardial coming from the circumflex. We advanced a caravel microcatheter proximal into the vessel and performed a selective injection that demonstrated a continuous connection to the distal vessel. However, that was not the optimal collateral for crossing, and that is why we chose a separate one that had a better connection. And uh, we were then able to visualize the presence of a fairly good size collateral. It did have some tortuosity, but appeared to, correct, to connect nicely with the uh, right posterior lateral branch. We used the Caravel and the SUO O3 guide wire and were able to successfully advance the guide wire all the way into the distal target vessel and all the way into an acute marginal branch at the distal cap. We then used this as a marker to advance uh, the undergrade guide wire and we were actually able to advance uh, an undergrade pilot 200 guide wire into the distal trilumen as confirmed once again by contralateral injection. Given the large size of the branch of the distal cap, we did multiple attempts trying to wire it, which, as I will show you, might not have been uh, the optimal approach. We had significant difficulty, but eventually we decided to leave this wire there and perform predilatation. We then removed the retrograde guide wire and performed a contralateral injection, showing no injury of the collateral vessel. However, when we did an undergrade injection, which was done in an attempt to position the stand, then two things happened at the same time. The first thing is that we have a perforation 
into the area of the occlusion and also have a fairly significant aortocoronary dissection. We did have some pressure dampening and probably the forceful injection resulted in this osteal aortocoronary dissection. This is one of those unique situations in one in when bad things happen together. We have two different things. One is a perforation and one is a dissection that threatens to close the proximal part of the vessel. The key in these situations is to avoid losing the guide wire, which unfortunately happened in our case in an attempt to remove the Amplatz guide catheter. But fortunately, we were able to re-engage the right coronary with a JR4 uh, six French guide catheter, advance the guide wire without injecting contrast, and then did a, a very gentle injection. But even with that, you can see that there is filling into the subintimal space. We therefore place stents without any further injections. That's the one thing with aortocoronary dissection to avoid, which is doing repeat injections because they can propagate the dissection and the hematoma. We were able to deliver a guideliner so that we didn't inject contrast and propagate the aortocoronary dissection. We definitely want to take a better look at this area of perforation that appeared to have sealed, but we want to be 100% sure, especially given that this is a previous coronary bypass graft patient. And in those patients, it is known that uh, perforations could be uh, very risky and cause localized tamponade. However, that area of perforation appeared to be stable. That was not changing. And uh, therefore, we stopped the procedure. The graft was already essentially closed, so we didn't have to do any coiling. And we did confirm nice Timothy flow into the distal vessel. And this is an example of uh, using a guide catheter extension for preventing contrast injection in cases of aortocoronary dissection that can propagate the osteal dissection. So in summary, this is a case showing the potential difficulties associated with CTOPCI in previous coronary bypass graft surgery. One of them is um, the aortocoronary dissection that uh, likely occurred because of injection despite pressure dampening. The key thing for treating this is to avoid subsequent injections try to deliver stents and cover it without injecting more contrast. Another interesting point is to be aware of the distal wire position. Retrospectively, when we're trying to wire the branch, the wire actually was going into a different area and caused the wire perforation. Fortunately, because we had not advanced a microcatheter that did not uh, require cover stents or coils, but sealed after placing a stent over the origin of this branch. And finally, once we have a, a perforation in a patient with previous coronary bypass graft surgery, there are concerns for localized tamponade. And in this particular case, we did a CT of the chest that did not show any um, loculated pericardial effusion, and the patient had an uneventful hospital stay. Thank you.